My name is Yanlorta Garcia, and I'm going to present to you my interesting case. This case is about a female newborn of 39 weeks of gestation who presented at her second day of life with a parietal soft mobile erythematous uh, subscalp mass about one centimeter without another abnormalities and with no relevant medical history. Therefore, a transfontanella ultrasound was requested to evaluate the mass. In these clinical photos of the patient, we can observe in the parietal bone the mass, who is covered by red skin, and the mass was mobile and soft by the clinical exploration. In the next slide, it's shown some, uh, it's shown some images of the ultrasound, starting with this coronal and sagittal views of uh, showing a midline parietal cystic mass with a solid fibrous tract through a small area of a school defect about, <clears throat> about five millimeters that are apparently connect to the meninges. The next image corresponds to a color doppler ultrasound demonstrating the absence of low indolation. And these multiple images demonstrating the connection of the subscalp mass to the infracranial space be a small round defect in the osseous cranium, which is indicated with a red arrow. This uh, sagittal color doctor examination shows an infracranial vascular structure with path to the bone defect compatible with persistent falcin sinus which is one of the associated venous anomalies in this pathology. So an atretic cephalocele was suggested as a diagnostic possibility and contrast MRI of the brain was performed to evaluate the infracranial abnormalities. And these uh, T2 T uh, weight images um, shows uh, the orange arrow, an extracranial lesion, hyperintense, with a T2 millimeters bone defect, and the blue arrow shows a vertically orientated persistent primitive pulsing vein and adjacent distinct thin fibrous stalk are pointing and to a, connecting the cephalocele through the calvarian defect. So um, the athletic cephalocele was confirmed. Talking a, a little about this pathology, uh, an atretic cephalocele is a rare disruption of neural tube closure. The incidence, uh, the reported incidence ranges from 1 in 3,500 to 1 in 5,000 live birds. Uh, it's, a uh, it's a small subscalp lesion that consists of dura, fibrous tissue, and dysplastic brain tissues. It's not common presentation. It's a palpable midline parietal soft tissue mass occasionally occipital with a wide range of clinical presentation and it could be associated with multi multiple infracranial malformations being the fenestrated superior sagittal sinus the most common. They are typically sporadic and have a more favorable prognosis than true or non involute involu involu Non-involulated cephalocils. Atretic cephalocils usually occur with a few uh, centimeters of the lambda, with the most being parietal in location, but uh, sometimes it can be occipital. Most patients are diagnosed after birth, and so scalp lesions often have a cystic quality, and a palpable pulp cranial defect is usually appreciate, appreciated on physical examination. The lesion is regularly covered by skin, and can can have either or no, or no hair or excessive hair growth. The range of clinical presentation is from normal neurological development being an isolated malformation. 
but it can be uh, associated with uh, venous malformations and as fenestrated superior sagittal uh, sinus, persistent falcin sinus, or vertical embryonic pos positioning of the straight sinus. The imaging findings using different modalities, modalities are the following. By uh, ultrasound, we can observe a well-defined anechoic or hypoechoic extracranial lesions with a tract uh, connecting through a small bone defect with the intracranial space and usually directed toward the superior sagittal sinus. On CT, the finding is a subgallial soft tissue mass with a small cranial defect superior to lambda. Uh, it has a cyst density and doesn't enhance, enhance with contra when contrast is used. On MRI, we see the same mass characteristics. On T2 weight MRI, uh, brain images uh, shows a mass with high signal and a low signal in T1 weight images. And when we, we use contrast, the mass shows heterogeneous, heterogeneous enhancement with the fibrous tract outlined by adjacent enhancing veins. The differential diagnosis uh, are uh, sinus pericrani and dermo, dermotis, but it uh, but can include other congenital lesions such as hemangioma, aplasia cutis, lipoma, and cephalohematoma. And the sinus pericrani is an abnormal communication between the intracranial and extracranial venous system. Present, uh, it presents a subscalp soft tissue lesion filled with venous blood that empties with stranding and refills with recumbent position, position and uh, we can observe uh, that characteristics on uh, ultrasound. And the dermoid cyst, uh, it contains mature adnexal components and typically are firmer than a phrytic cephalocele and covered by redness skin. Calvarial defects seen with dermosis are rounded and narrow from the outside inward, the, the opposite seen with athletic cephalosis. And this is the bibliography I've used, and that's all. Thank you. Okay, good morning. My name is Sofia Canales. I'm a third year resident from Dr. Jose Eleuterio Gonzalez Hospital, and today I'm going to present you uh, my interesting case. Uh, my case it's about a, a 82 year old uh, heavy smoker male that came to our emergency department complaining of one episode of painless gross immaturia. Past medical history was remarkable for just three years of lower urinary tract symptoms. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, 
Uh, his past medical history was remarkable for just three years of lower urinary tract symptoms treated by alpha-1 blocker medication. Physical examination showed male pale patient, arterial hypertension as medical history and vital signs were in normal limits. His blood pressure was 120 on 60 on pulse of 70. Uh, there was male tenderness in the lower abdominal region. Okay, the patient underwent CT of abdomen and pelvis with intravenous contrast material and pearl venous face images showed bilateral chronic kidney disease. Adromatous plaques and calcification of the abdominal aorta, vertebral spinal ostephytes, but the most relevant in, in, in this patient is uh, bladder wall thickening and the right side posterior lateral bladder diverticulum with mass of soft tissue attenuation. Okay, we see here. Okay, um, and other findings like uh, enlarged prostate and excretory phase showed um, filling defect, filling defect in the bladder, bladder wall, inner of the um, diverticulum, and reduction in urinary caliber but no gross extension into the peri perivesical fat, lymphadenopathy or distant um, metastasis. Okay, uh, post contrast images revealed enhancement of the mass from 60 to 70 Huntsville units and filling defect in the, in the bladder wall and inner of uh, diverticulum in the excretory phase. In this case, we don't have a previous ultrasound, but we'll. Sorry, please. Salta, salta. 